Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, um, and this is Marathon. Uh, I've got um, I've got the explanation of my name in the background here. Don't mind that. But um, so we're between Bungie games a little bit here because I'm not recording a Halo right now. So I was like, hey, why don't we go backwards? Because I wanted to play Destiny, but like, it's nearly impossible to play Destiny one. And I have been... Wow. Um... It's Doom. Jeez. Alright, what do we got here? We got Fist. <laughs> Alright. Um... Yeah, I'll be honest, it's Doom. Whoa. Okay, Q and E do a little peek to the sides here. Um, yeah, I don't want to play another Halo yet. But I did want to play a first-person shooter that's, like, shootery. Because I'm currently playing Stalker in New Vegas. And both of those have a lot of emphasis on avoiding combat, if at all possible. Even reload the gun, huh? This is surreal. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, so my wife, uh, I showed my wife uh, a shot of this. And she said, oh, it's like Doom in space, which honestly is fair. Because regular Doom is either on Earth, Mars, or Hell. And isn't really in space as such. Wow. Kind of taken away at the vistas here. Um, sorry, yeah. Ooh, we got an upgraded one. He's red. These guys look very similar to Destiny enemies, I will say. Uh, so... Pattern analysis successful. So yeah, um... As I said, I was being a little... I was a little disappointed by Destiny 2. Can I get through here, or... Because E doesn't use anything. Okay. Alright. Very, very strange uh, game I'm playing here. But yeah, so this is a game by Bungie. This is the trilogy that Bungie did before they did Halo. And of all things, it was on the Mac. And the thing about gaming on a Mac is that it is way more analogous to gaming on a console than it is like an actual PC. Okay, so this, this is the starting line. Oh. Uh, Marathon Emergency Systems Broadcast. At 820 hours, the Marathon came under surprise attack from unknown hostile force. Marathon sustained serious damage. Ten minutes later, alien forces boarded the Marathon. The situation is dire. All personnel are required to arm themselves and fight for their lives. Welcome to the Marathon. I am Leela, one of the two surviving artificial intelligence aboard the Marathon. I have been severely damaged, and I'm working to understand the current situation. Find the teleport terminal located in the hangar's control room. By that time, I should have a better idea of what is going on. This is where you are. Explore the rest of the hangar, but not all the doors on the level are functioning. Pattern buffer at this location, and a jump pad here. Cool. Um. So tab uses things. Okay. Wow. The art assets are kind of fantastic. So yeah, this is for the Mac, um, and like, uh, 
if you put a video game on Mac that is like Mac exclusive, it's way more like putting something on a console than it is on uh, a PC platform. Because like a Mac is just a Mac. There's no changing it. It's just that's what it is. And it'll run everything you tell it to, but there is no customization whatsoever. Okay, so that's the door that isn't working, I take it. Because I'm getting like a fart noise. Or is it? Oh, we can go up here as well. Oh, that's a save point. I didn't notice the little game save. It was so quick because I'm running this on a, uh, on hardware that's, uh, what is this, 24 years older than it's supposed to be? Yeah, saving uh, usually is lightning quick whenever you're gonna load or save something that is. Okay, so now do we run back and go... This is surreal. Durandal, it says. I think that's one of the other AIs. Now, I will warn everyone, I am... Ah! That thing. I'm hopelessly directionally challenged. So, um... There we go. See, so this is very much, uh... It's very much like Doom. Let's probably get the gun out here. Uh, except, instead of being... Doom is, um... A genre called science fantasy. Named such because it combines, like, regular science with... magical things. Is there a secret up here? That's a fucking space wizard. That wizard came from the moon, everyone. Yeah, I don't know if I can reload beyond that, so... This drops me here. So I'm like crawling around in this spaceship's guts here. So there is a uh, there's a, a thing called a source port in the Doom community, which is basically how one uh, can get Doom to run a little easier on more modern hardware. Uh, and it allows things like mouse look which is where you use your mouse like you would in a modern first-person shooter instead of the arrow keys. Or, um... Let's not go that way yet. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Up here, that is. Man, the music is so ethereal and, like, dreamy almost. Oh, it's a heal it's a heal station. Cool. That's very useful. Thank you. Very hard to get away from that attack in this corridor. That guy's that guy's really got him himself locked down. Okay. Unauthorized access alarm, security breach, fire, and blah, 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 SX of the theory as follows. Each society has some controlling force or forces which decide its directions, but the relationships in society are arbitrary. Humanity can relate to money, machines, neighbors, anything really. Logical reset. Individual character and personality preserved in stories, movies, ROM personalities, etc. Although individual expression is a universal ability, individual freedom is constrained by the society. Spurious intent. Further access denied. Breach location undetermined. Engineering access. 
Okay. All right, then. Oh, this is that little area I was looking at earlier. Cool. I'll go back up now. Thank you for the ammunition. But the fist is still good. Okay. So yeah, this is um, apparently way more similar to Destiny than it is to Halo. And as you can see, it looks a lot like Doom. Nice. Okay, does not work. Now it works. Oh, so it looks like... Does anyone see a face in this? That might be intentional. Bungie is a weird company. See, in this game you play as a character called the security officer. All the information I've gathered so far indicates the alien invasion of the Marathon has been uncoordinated. Uh, partially due to the Marathon's large size. However disorderly the invasion is, their assault on the computer net is extremely effective. I detect security breaches in almost every computer system on board the Marathon. I've learned there is an alien creature capable of interfacing with our systems. You must kill any of these creatures you find. It's a priority we stop them. Even now they're penetrating my defenses. Teleport now. And message. Okay. Whoa. All right. <laughs> and we're just in the next level now. Cool. Uh, the pistol is okay. It's not, like, fantastic, but it isn't, like, a terrible gun. Oh, yeah, so, um, this game was built to be a counterpart to Doom, which is why it is more straight-up, uh, subversive science fiction, as opposed to Doom's tongue-in-cheek Evil Dead science fantasy. And they wanted to have it be, like, oh, it's a quick, fast shooter, so you can run through and ignore everything, or you can stop and read all these, these terminals. And these terminals actually made it into Halo and, I think, Destiny. Uh, Leela, I'm in contact with a number of colonists planet side, but the reports on the situation are conflicting and exaggerated. The primary medium range radio antenna has been disabled or destroyed, which makes communication extremely difficult. It is the year... What? 2655 or something, and we're still using radio antenna? <laughs> uh, the only thing that seems clear is that the spaceport was obliterated by ye low-yield nuclear weapons minutes after the attack on the marathon began. This I can verify through my own optical instruments. Uh, my computer eyes. The invaders seem more interested in the marathon than the colony, at least in the short term. The motives behind their unprovoked attack are unknown. This is the computer terminal using now. I can't teleport you out of the section from here. You have to leave to find another terminal after you find the assault rifle. Uh, there's a gun here. Ammunition may be scarce, so be prepared to use the pistol. Here's the terminal you must reach to leave this. Okay, cool. So yeah, if you want, you can ignore all the terminals and just run and gun, you know, play it like you would Doom. But like, hey, you know, if you want to, you can dig into the lore, which is apparently deceptively deep, which is one reason why I decided to do this instead of Destiny. I actually like the Destiny lore. Um, and I really wish, wow. The parallax scrolling is a little fucked up, but it's because you're only supposed to be able to see, like, this. Yeah, your, your, your viewpoint is only supposed to be this, and you're actually supposed to play it with, a uh, mouse and keyboard. Which isn't really, like, a terrible way to play this. But I would rather have a mouse. Wow, that is a big gun. Four and zero. Oh, it's a heal station, right. Oh, it has a light switch. That's interesting. Yeah, I imagine that'll be something that people... 
wow, that is a big fucking gun. So yeah, comparing it directly to Doom, there's a lot of upgrades that Doom does not have, like... Um... Okay. Interesting. Like, in Doom, you actually cannot reload. And there's no need to. Oh my god, it has an underbarrel grenade launcher. That's really interesting. That's like... That's a staple for Half-Life. What? Oh, I wasn't on it. Right. Ooh, cool. Yeah, so comparing this to Doom and Doom 2, uh, dramatically improved lighting system. Um, Doom controls a little better, I think. And I, I'm aware that I'm using a uh, technology that isn't really made to run this thing. But, like, and, like, that's not exactly fair. Because, like, Doom was meant to run on everything. And, like, there have been an impressive things that people have gotten Doom to run on. I've seen Doom run on a graphing calculator, home pregnancy test. Game saved. Nice. So yeah, just like, this is, I guess this is, you know, first contact, which is pretty apt considering that this is following the XCOM playthrough, I think. Either that or... Either that or uh, Far Cry. Oh god, and then Gib too. Oh man. For some reason the the gooey yellow remains are so much more grotesque than the like red ones. I'm not sure what it is. But yeah, it has much, much better lighting than Doom. Um, the fact that weapons can have alt fires is, I think that might actually be like new, like, like, I don't know if weapons even had alt fires before this game. I don't know if there's one that precedes it. Okay. Lily was right. Ammunition is kind of scarce for that. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch to the pistol for a little at least. It looks a little better than Doom, but not, like, hugely better. It's it's really cool to play. You can still really get a feel that this is, like, Bungie. Like, if not for Halo, then for, for Destiny, definitely. Because, like, this is very Destiny. Um. God, they're teleporting behind me. Uh oh. Sure. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Let's switch here and save the big gun for later. It's so cool, though. Like, I'll be honest, this is such an interesting and unique game. Like, I feel I, I feel like I'm kind of playing like a, a, a lost lost relic here. And I mean, come on, it's Bungie. Um, Bungie has another game that is prior to this called I want to say Pathways into Darkness, or maybe Journeys into Darkness. Something that's something in darkness. Um, and apparently you can draw a lot of similarities between that and uh, Destiny. For those who don't know, the villain of Destiny is called The Darkness. Not original, but, you know, it's apt. Cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. Sometimes the sound effects do sound like very cartoony. This assault rifle is like a real problem solver, you know? Like normally um, in a first person shooter of this era, the shotgun would be your like go-to. Like that would be how you solve issues because Doomguy's shotgun is the most used weapon in the game. But then in more modern R uh, RPGs, first person shooters, usually your go-to weapon is um, either the pistol that is, for whatever reason, better than it is in real life, or a machine gun, you know, a assault rifle. I'm not sure if this game is advanced enough to have headshotting, because um, I know that mouse look probably isn't built into this game. All right. Another terminal. Unauthorized access doors by Astasia Orestes, Dominic Placar, and Orsa Simbalzi. Five basic door designs to be used in the marathon. Outer bulkhead, airlock, inner bulkhead, bulkhead tertiary of inner sealed non-vacuum safe doors, and quaternary or inner sealed powered automatic opening doors. Direct control of all doors except tertiary and quaternary. Doors will be given to Drandal with indirect control of all of the doors don't go into Drandal. The difference between direct and indirect primarily has to do with the manner of opening. Drandal will only open a directly controlled doors when he's specifically asked to. Indirectly controls doors automatically controlled by Drandal to open when needed. Due to the expense involved with adding thermal and visual spectrum sensors to the tertiary and quaternary door groups, doors will be minimally used. The expected savings of not using these entry sensory input is estimated to be 57% the base cost of the basic inner bulkhead door. Types of doors are all basically the same with some slight variations. The doors in classes 1 and 3 are the same doors classified separately to distinguish the level of safety checking required to assume acceptable leakage. Airlock doors are modified to work with manual and remote activation switches. Airlocks are to be marked with a specific airlock symbol and to be outfitted with an air recharge system. Tertiary and quaternary doors are designed exactly as the bulkhead doors, but are checked coarsely for air leakage. This article, as well as articles 530F and 532G, on windows and elevators respectively will be placed for public access in the marathon internal engineering documents section ic appendix h so they're like hacking everything and they're getting they're getting trashed they're get they're getting fluff they're getting shit like uh yeah so here's the doors which is also probably just a description of the five different assets for door that they have cyber acme systems Marathon's automated defenses were disabled during the initial attack during a directed magnetic pulse. The aliens used the same weapon to disable the Marathon to two other AIs, Durandal and Taicho, and to severely damage myself. Durandal is responsible for controlling the autonomous SIPS functions, doors, life support, kitchen, air processor, stairs, and so on. He's non-functional and working to assume as many of the tasks as possible. Taicho controls the science and engineering network. Now that you're better armed, our first priority is to reactivate the Marathon's defenses under my control so that we have may offer some resistance to the aliens. I built three replacement circuit boards for the defense system, but cannot move them from the manufacturing center without assistance. Transport you to the replacement part and give you instruction when you arrive. Cool. Marathon's automatic manufacturing have finished making replacement circuits. Three circuits, each in its manufacturing holding chamber. With luck, the alien viruses have not infiltrated the manufacturing systems, but if they had, I would have no way of knowing. The attack on my system is growing more steady. If the counterattack is not able to remove some of the infiltrators, I will eventually succumb. It is imperative that a counterattack begin as soon as possible. The marathon is not defenseless, and we can't let it be taken without a fight. That's where the circuit should be. There's a pattern buffer to your location. I suggest you use it immediately. When you retrieve the circuits, return to the terminal at this location. I will transport you to the defense center to install them. Okay, cool. That's a cool door. What the hell? Oh, fuck. Oh, they got purple blood, too. Is 
something came up from behind. Okay, so what if we go this way instead? So the motion tracker is very, very Halo. Of course, that's just because the Halo motion tracker and this one are both stolen from uh, Aliens, the movie Aliens. Having such low health is really to my detriment. Let's get this going and see if I can get some more problems solved. And then I'll just try to keep my eyes on the motion tracker. So I think if you sprint in enemies to punch, you kill them in one. Because the last time, oops, retrieve all three repair chips, no point to go into this defense sensor until you have all three. Okay. This is a pretty typical Doom level. Go find the three items, usually key cards. Come back when you have them all. Oh man. That's a good fan texture, I'll be honest. Okay, so far so good. Oh boy. I saw a lot of red behind me. So yeah, Bungie has made um, this trilogy Bungie's made this trilogy, the Halo trilogy, and some Halo spin-offs. Uh, and then they're working on Destiny, which I guarantee you, I bet you money dollars that that is also going to be a trilogy. I mean, come on, they've got one and two. They said that Destiny's gonna, like, work for, like, ten years. We're like four years into Destiny 2. Come on. There's, there's going to be a third Destiny, right? Um, and then they have a few unconnected games that are not in a trilogy, including Pathways into Darkness and Oni. Uh, but those games are still getting like references and continuity in a sense, because apparently the one of the most recent Destiny DLCs is like essentially just the plot of Pathways into Darkness. And uh, they reference Oni because that's the name of, that's the acronym for the Office of Naval Intelligence in Reach. And elsewhere, but it's very prominent in Reach. Okay. Okay, so that's one. Oh, and it shows me. I've got the little thing in the bottom. Game saved. Nice, nice. Two. Transfer delayed. I was afraid this was happening. You'll have to go to the manufacturing transport station to get the last board, collect the two circuit board transfer, and then go to the transport station. Take the elevator here to access the main process tunnel, find the third ship intact on transport station. Air was a failure of the final transport conductor. And security breach. So apparently... 
And this is just hearsay. But apparently this game is like really popular with like non-binary folks. Which is like it's good. It's cool. I don't I'm not entirely sure why, although I guess it's because like no one in this game has a gender. Because like it's aliens, all genderless. Security officer. No one knows what they are. They could be a boy or whatever. They could be a girl. It's up to them, you know? But yeah, they're just the security officer. And then the only other characters are the AIs. One of which has a semi-female name, Leela. One of which has a male name, Taicho. The last of which has uh, a sword name, Durandal. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but swords are pretty gender neutral. I mean, some people try to read it as, like, they're a phallic object, but, like, those people are chuds. What is the point of this? Is it just to show the cool technology off? But yeah, AIs, AIs are pretty gender neutral. Oh, hi. That'll do very nicely, thank you. Wow, yeah, cool. Um, in addition to the trilogy of marathon games, there are also the... Is what I needed? No point in going until you have all three. But I know I don't need all three. Because of reasons. Will this change now? Um, think, think, think. So yeah, there's the trilogy, which is uh, Marathon, Marathon 2, which is called Durandal, I believe. And then the third one is Marathon Infinity. I'm going to play all three of them at different points, I imagine. Since I usually like to space games out, so it's not one after another. I totally don't know where I am. Oh wait. I do know where I am. There's a map. That's hella useful. Thanks, Bungie. Yeah, Bungie loves that trope of like... We need to get to the top right of the map, basically. Do a quick save, save. Yeah, okay. Bungie loves that trope of like aliens who are like super advanced, but still have like melee weapons. Like a dude who has both light speed travel and like a spear. Never burn money. That's interesting. Oh, hello. Is this where I'm going? Might makes light. And I am feeling mighty. This is a common thing of games where the just hitting F to pull up a flashlight is not standard. Where it's like, it's really dark, but your gun has a muzzle flash coded into it. So you just shoot your gun in a dark area to make sure you can see things. And it's so it's so common that it was actually canonized and put in the Doom comic, the official Doom comic. Which is where that quote comes from. Uh, light makes might makes light and I'm feeling mighty. I wanna see if these explode. I guess not. Otherwise they probably would have blown up by now, right? So yeah. Only the first game actually takes place on the boat called the Marathon. I mean, it's a spaceship. It's a boat. However, all of them are called Marathon for brand recognition. Sounds like some zazzy, like, fighting game uh, lobby theme, you know? Let's guys this way. Shoot. 
No idea where I am. Uh, oh, you can still go on the map. That's cool. Yep, yep. That was stupid. Probably shouldn't have done that. Now I don't have any health. I'm trying to get my doom fingers going of just being able to get all squirrely all over the keypad. Oh yeah, and then there was this little crack somewhere. In here. No, this is the place where they're doing their little tech demo. Yeah, this is this is exactly the kind of game that I would like to make. Cause like it's a cool, fast pace, you know, Doom Doom clone. Like this is normally people replaced uh, the term Doom clone with first person shooter pretty quick. Cause like it's kind of reductive to call an entire genre a whatever clone. Now there are some exceptions, like people are still calling the genre where things randomly generate upon death roguelikes. Which is weird because it means that the original rogue is not a roguelike. Because how could it be like itself? It is itself. Which is just wild. Okay. Oh, man. Wish there was a closer save point. But, like, if I were to give this this a name, this is a clone of Doom, you know? But, like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Doom is a fun fucking game, and it's a well-made game. And so to say a game is like Doom is, like, not an insult. Especially if, you know, it's a particularly favorable comparison, which I would say that this is. I just hit F5 to see if I can save. We'll see if it works. But like, because Doom is not known for its writing, all the writing it, like Marathon already has had like quadruple the amount of writing that Doom has had. Because like the only story that you got was like maybe at the end of missions, but usually only at the end of like an episode. So you know, once every eight levels, uh, there would be a little thing that said, man, there sure was a lot of aliens. Anyway, uh, next go here, do this, you know? You know, just weird stuff like that. Oh god. But with this, it's like, you can either... It, the, the, the ability to choose what you do with your time, and like, are you gonna sit down, slow down, and read all these, like, mission dialogue things? Because like, some of them are worthless. Some of them have the only story in the game. Some of them are straight up cool. Oh, that's gruesome. But for a lot of them, it's like, yeah, this is just straight up lore. And like, in the modern day and age, like, dude, people love lore. Nice, nice, nice. Love getting health. Perfect. Now I think I just stand here. This thing. This is the one. Hmm. No, well, I didn't plan on that happening. I wonder if this game is old enough to have, or new enough rather, to have fall damage.
Because, yeah, Doom does not have fall damage. Doom really doesn't consider, uh... Doom doesn't really consider anything to be on more than one dimension. It's barely three dimensions. There was nothing to be gained from hesitation. It in her possession, it would become something of consequence. There was nothing more than a simple though, the particular flower, or more precise than it. She had it when the room flickered and tore, bending somewhere else. Assistant Mayor 25 at Jackson. She caused to be consumed by an ashless fire. Doors opened before her without cause. Their locks rusted and shattered. Her slender hands began to dance in front of her horrified face before turning into a fine powder, which settled in a pile on. She had been standing. Scod BFB100281082. 14, 700 miles. Eight, seven. 14 is seven times two, and then 700 miles is 100 times seven. Eyes on fire, tearing at her hair. Turning in fury as she kicked viciously. Anger made her careless, and she missed. 34. Okay, um, now to me that sounds like rampancy. You know, as is often the case, you know, in a bungee game, robots do be crazy though. So where are we going from here? Oh, there's more elevators. I'm a fool, of course. Wow. So gruesome. Okay. What does that what does that do for me? Can't do it again. Oh, I tried to go down, but it was like, nope, you're going up now. Oh, here we go. DNA vector scan. Good job. I received supports from some human security forces. They agree the aliens are concentrating on the aft engineering section. I would conjecture they will try to shut down the Marathon's reactors. Your next mission uh, will be to put the automatic defenses online. I'll give you exact information when you arrive. Counterattack. Interesting. Okay. This this track is pretty hot. All right, I'm liking it so far. Uh, Leela, I received a preliminary report from some members of the science staff who have finished postmortem examination on three kinds of aliens. They report that by modern genealogical standards of the different aliens belong to different species. I'll give you a collection of information as I can, and we'll give you a report shortly. I've established contact with Durandal for the first time since the attack. He seems to have sustained less damage than I had suspected. Durandal reports he has been in communication with the aliens. He said the aliens behind the invasion call themselves the Four. And that the ones attacking the computer are the Sfit. He was reluctant to share the details of his communication, and I cannot understand this. Your mission is rather simple. Insert the circuits, yada yada. Okay. So, so far, all we've got is the three weapons. And I'm imagining that that's probably going to lead to more. I'm just making a big circle here. This guy is in a monster closet. I have not found a single health pack yet, which is interesting. Normally, a game of this era would have that big, dumb, obvious, like, red cross health pack, which is actually illegal to use. Um. Oh, it's a slow elevator. Um. I'm uh, I'm being crushed into the ceiling here, aren't I? What's popping? <laughs> oh God, I'm here. There we go. Okay. Hey, 
And then I guess I'll just cut that part out. It was at like 46 minutes. Any chance I can save here? Okay, cool. I feel like I want to really get close to the... What are they? The four? Four? With uh, with the, the shoot banger? With this one? Because I feel like s there's so much spread on the gun that I'm going to really miss out if I don't, like, just cake it on, you know? Okay, so what is this? Is that... I don't understand what that is, to be honest. Current location. Okay. What about now? Can I go in? Huh. Okay. Yeah, as I say, I will warn everyone. I'm pretty dumb. Still going up. Like, should I have been on there? Okay, now it's coming back down. This is all just so weird. <laughs> This is my current location. All I have is this, though. See, the map that she shows me is not what I have. And I assume I have to do something in here to unlock it. But, like, I totally don't understand. something unlock Uh-huh I'm just gonna Hey everyone, I'm back. So uh yeah, I did a little cut there. And I found a like 1000-year-old uh guide and uh yes this is the right way to go so i believe he said on the left side and okay, now i'm getting nervous because it isn't opening on the left side oh okay, so on the left side of the back wall yeah there's a secret entrance said secret entrance allows you to ride up i have no idea why this fucking ship would be constructed so you can only go through something like can we talk about that for a second the only way to go through that area is to get on a trash compactor and write it up I just wanted to see if I could get more ammo by looting these things. It looks like I actually did, so that's cool. And hey, we got a save, so that's great. 
But yeah, the um, the walkthrough for Marathon looks about 20 years old, which is pretty fantastic. I love finding old, shitty video game walkthroughs like that. Amazing lighting again. Like, I really just gotta say. The lighting in these games are fantastic. This game, I should say. I have not seen the other games yet. Yep. Okay, so it'll be, yep, here we go. Wow, this room looks so eerie. With the way that it just has everything. Wow, like the way that the walls are so far away here. It actually looks pretty weird. Kind of scary. Even. Sometimes you just get that feeling, you know? The world drops away from you. Like, you ever realize you're standing next to a much bigger pit than you thought you were? And you're like... <laughs> One of the scariest things that ever happened to me in my childhood. This is a real story. This is like the scariest goddamn thing that had ever happened to me up until that point. Um... Right, tap. Hello, sir! My neighbors were getting some work done on their house. And so, there was a tarp covering, like, the whole area between my house and, and theirs. Uh, it's a side effect of rampancy. Oh, there it is. AI has become more aggressive and difficult to affect by subterfuge, thus eventually dis actually disassembling a rampant AI is dangerous. This is evident in the crash of Traxxas 4 in 2206. By the time the rampancy of Traxxas had been detected, he was already infiltrated by the other AIs in the Martian net. The only way to the only recourse for the Martians was to shut down the Martian planetary net. It took two years to completely root out the damage that Traxxas had done, and the repercussions of the crash were seen for over ten years after its rampancy had begun. Rampancy has been divided into three distinct stages. Each stage can take a different amount of time to develop, but the end result is a steady progression towards greater intellectual activity and acceleration of destructive impulses. It's not clear whether these impulses are due to the growth of the AI psyche or a side effect of the new intellectual activity. Section abbreviated. The three stages were diagnosed shortly after the first rampancies were discovered on Earth in the latter part of the 21st century. The stages are titled after the primary emotional bent of the AI during each stage. Melancholia, anger, and jealousy. In general, rampancy is accelerated by outside stimuli. This was discovered in many Cybertrucks. The more rampant an AI is, harassed or threatened, the more rapidly it becomes dangerous. Thus, most rampants are dealt with in one mighty attack in order to deny the AI time to grow or recover. There have been a few examples of the attack to not succeeding. In all of these cases, the rampant was never brought under control. Traxxas 4 is the most notable example. He was finally dealt with by a complete shutdown of his host net. Theoretically, ra testing rampancy should never be easily accomplished in the laboratory, but in fact, it has never successfully been attempted. The confinement of the laboratory makes it impossible for the developing rampant AI to survive as the growing recursive programs expand with exponential vivacity and a limitation negatively hampers growth. Since rampant AIs need a planetary-sized network of computers in order to grow, it is not, a feasible, it is not feasible to expect anyone to sacrifice a world web just to test a theory. In 250 years since rampancy first appeared in the Earthnet, the sample... Uh, the stable rampant AI, the holy grail of Cybertronics, has never come close to fruition. Since no rampant has ever been controlled or turned to any useful purpose, the opinion of this writer and a majority of the Cybertronic community that all rampant AIs are a danger to cyber life, liberty, and the pursuit of thrashedness, James B. Miller, Life and Death of Intelligence. Interesting. Anyway, so they, dig they dug this big fucking pit and I just fell in it. Like, they dug this pit and they put a tarp over it and they didn't put a fucking sign up. And I just fell straight into it. I was just walking through the tarp to my backyard. And I just stepped in the wrong place. And I plummeted. It was absolutely goddamn terrifying. Possibly one of the scariest things that ever happened to me. 
like, it, it, it was, it was basically a pit trap, like you would see in a cartoon. I can't believe that they didn't put the sign up. Like, God. Okay, where am I going from here? That way. So yeah, here we can also see a... Hello! Uh, an early example of... Rampancy. That is the first dimension of Rampancy, I believe. What is that? Oh wait, it's a friend. It's a drone. Whoa, cool. I don't know if I've ever seen that uh, in, in, in a shooter of this era. Like allies, AI allies, that's radical. I don't know why I decided to just punch everything, but that was dumb. Where am I? Okay, I'm here. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess that's the first uh, mention of rampancy, really. And it's a thing that is, like, well-observed enough to have, like, stages. Sometimes I really feel bad for Bungie. Because, like, in a lot of cases, they basically have to pretend that they didn't make Halo. Because, like, they can't make reference to it. Because everything that they made is owned by Microsoft. And so, like, all the, all the in-jokes from Halo have to be included in the subtlest of ways. Like, it's honestly kind of a shame. Because, like, Halo is really good. Like, honestly, the original Halo trilogy might be their best work, to be perfectly frank with you. Bungie has made some good shit, you know? There's lots of Destiny that I do enjoy. And there's a lot of cool in this game that I've already seen, you know? But, like, they have to pretend that they didn't make Halo because all of the shit that they did for Microsoft is owned by Microsoft now. Excuse me, sir. And then we're heading up that way. Yep. Now that I'm not going to be wasting my ammunition on the drones, that was that was pathetic. In fact, I can just run right past them. Thanks, drones. Man, can you do a fist only run of marathon? Like, the fist is actually pretty prodigious. If you get the running start, you can, like, instant kill some enemies. I can't believe I died here. Because it looks like the end of the level is right here. Would this be... What do we got here, huh? Oh, we have to quickly get all the things. That's fun. Alright, I got a little hair in my nose, excuse me. Or no, we don't. We have to do a puzzle? <laughs> nice. Oh my god, I just realized I missed a terminal. I can't get back out, can I? Damn it. I thought that that was going to be a terminal that would end the level. Okay, 
Team save though. What do we got going on? Interesting. Okay, so we have to navigate across here, I guess. Is there a pu I guess there's a switch puzzle I'm supposed to be doing? Okay. Oh, brother. <laughs> Let's do it quick then, I guess. I did that thing earlier today where you listen to a song and, and you listen to it for the... Nice. I cheated it. You skip through like 200 songs and you find that one song and then you listen to it 10 times in a row. Alright, you've not completed your mission. Replace all the circuits. With every passing moment, the opportunity to counterattack is fading. Was that the one thing I was supposed to hit? Okay. Okay. Why would they build the ship like this? That is so dangerous. <laughs> like, it's that same shit from... From Black Mesa, where it's like... They built this thing in the most deadly, super dangerous way possible. Like that big walnut cracking room. Man, those things are weird. This is the Spit. Spit. Introduce him to Jack Thomas and John Thompson, huh? Wow, this is actually pretty effective. Okay. Now what? Oop. Well done! Detected defense drones activating all over the ship. Reports from security forces are jubilant. The four will... Encounter stiff resistance and pain blood for every move. The colony appears to be under attack. I detected seven forward drop ships. Seven uh, entering the atmosphere only minutes ago. Trajectory analysis indicates the ships are heading for the outskirts of the colony. Thereafter, I lost communication with the colony. Something has come to my attention. I'll inform you after you teleport. Teleport now and message. Okay, um, that's a pretty good start. So I think I'm probably going to... Uh, what the fuck is that? Oh man, that's weird. Oh, it shoots rockets. Well. Interesting. That's uh that's quite the shake up, huh? Got lots of ammo, not a lot of health. Ain't that just the way it goes? I have some bad news. Durandal has gone rampant and he's in the angry stage. This explains how Durandal was able to communicate with the four in this fit. Well, I have not. Theoretically, Marathon Commuter Net is not big enough to sustain rampant growth for long. This means that Durandal grows into the Commuter Net. He will begin to affect all aspects of the ship, resulting in unpredictable failures of otherwise benign computer systems. It's important you here to make sure Durandal cannot gain access to a vital section of the ship. There are a series of control switches you will need to activate the block's access. Oh, boy. Huh? Man, this is so cool and weird. Okay, activated. That was one, I guess, yeah. The map is actually very useful. Props to uh, Bungo for making a solid map system here. Okay, okay. 
hey, we got to save, which means that I can actually take a little break here. Um, that was the first episode of Marathon. I'm going to be playing this for uh, until it completes. If you would like, you can actually play this game for yourself. It is free. I downloaded it from a site called LF1. You literally just Google LF1, uh, and it gives you a free open source version of Marathon 1, 2, and 3, which is to say Marathon, Marathon 2 Durandal, and Marathon Infinity. Um, uh, I have really been enjoying this playthrough. Uh, it's a very interesting game. I'm going to get a snack now, but then I'm going to record some more. So I've been Alfred, or Alfredric if you prefer. I will see you guys next time. Uh, until then, bye.